Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon and founder and creator of KerimMD Skin. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And today we're gonna to talk about a very timely and very interesting topic, one that has literally filled my inbox with DMs and questions, and that is what's going on with Madonna after the 2023 Grammys revealed a look that people aren't familiar with in terms of her as a pop icon, as a celebrity that we've grown up, many of us grown up to love and recognize. And there's been a shape change to her face, facial dynamics, and as a result, people are wondering what in the world happened. So let me preface this by saying this. My purpose of this talk is not at all to break apart and really get into the details of what Madonna could have had. That's really never the purpose of our conversations when we talk about celebrities um, that, uh, that make the headlines. However, it's, it's more based on trying to understand what that potential change represents and how you, as an individual can be empowered to avoid them if indeed that is your goal, to avoid that. Obviously, everyone has a different aesthetic aptitude. What they want is different, and this is by no means a judgment, but I do know for a fact that based on the DMs and just my experience over the last uh, 20 years of dealing with people, that generally speaking, people want to preserve their identity, they wanna preserve the way they look, they just wanna look like a younger version of themselves as they're going through the aging process. And that's always been the foundation of our practice and it's always been the foundation of the techniques and approaches that we personally take. But at the end of the day, to each their own, right? I mean, we can't uh, say what's what's right for, for somebody else, we can only say what's right for us. And what I'm gonna to talk to you about is how to avoid what appears to be volume overload in a otherwise normal aging face, okay? And this is something that Madonna simply represents in the sense that it's a common feature that we actually see all over town. And we see this becoming more and more of a problem as fillers over the last 15, 20 years have become a bigger and bigger tool for facial rejuvenation and sometimes as a substitute for surgical treatments. And the fact that people use them over time has led to some of these changes. So I wanna recognize the fact that we're gonna use Madonna as a point of reference because we have v images of her when she was younger, images of her as she got a little bit older, and then finally this last Grammy in, in uh, 2023. So we'll have an idea of what that evolution has been and what potentially could have resulted in that and how you can avoid it. All right, so without further ado, let's break it down for a second. And so let's take a look at Madonna in her 20s. This is kind of, you know, peak Madonna. This is the Madonna that everyone pictures in their in their mind. Like I said, I grew up listening to her and loving her, and this is the image that we all recognize, right? But what's really noteworthy when you look at this image is that her overall volume status is on the lower side. If you really pay attention to what's happening underneath her eyes and her cheeks, they're actually a little bit on the lower side. And this isn't a bad thing. It, it exists in many 20, 30 year olds. And this is something I want you to keep in mind that it's okay to be a little on the lower side from a volume point of view, that more is not better and more is not necessarily more youthful. So let's just uh, keep that in mind as we kind of look at this. And you can over overall see that the jawline, the shape of her, her face, the temples, the upper lids, all these areas very much are on the lower side of volume. Right? So again, normal, beautiful, appears youthful, doesn't look tired, appropriate volume for a face. Now, let's fast forward to 50s. So this image here, you can see that clearly there's more volume than there was when she was in her 20s, but still not in a deformed way, but just a little bit more than it was. Probably use of fillers or any other type of volume augmentation has been added to the cheeks and different areas like that, which ultimately still very much, for the most part, is recognizably Madonna, but you can see it's starting to shift a little bit beyond where it was. I'm gonna stop right there for a second and just simply say this. Volume loss in the face happens to all of us, right? It's a gradual continuum that starts even in our 20s and goes on. And most people really love the fact that they've lost some of that baby fat, some of that sort of fullness and softness to their face by the time they're in their 30s. And once you're in that, in that point, that's kind of, for a lot of people say, that's like my favorite era. That little point in time, you're still on the less volume side, but you still haven't tipped over to looking haggard because this is what volume does. Volume doesn't make you look older. Please keep this very, very important point in mind. 
Volume loss doesn't make you look older. Volume loss makes you look more tired. When you get the hollows building up under the eyes and the temples sinking in, it makes you look a little maybe malnourished, maybe tired, maybe haggard, worn, etc. But what makes a person look older, and this is the key, is the change in the facial shape. When the jawline starts to sag and the neck starts to sag and the mid face starts to come down and the face goes from basically like a heart shaped or an upside down triangle to more or less a rectangle or even a right side up triangle where the base is heavier than the top, that is what gives the face a older look. So shape is what signifies aging, right? Not to be confused by volume loss. We all lose a little bit of volume. And it's not also to say that volume doesn't play a role in the overall anti-aging quest, but it has to be used intelligently and has to be used for the right reasons. Now let's quickly fast forward to the Grammys. Now you can see for whatever reason, I, again, I'm not going to speculate on what happened, but again, to represent, because Madonna represents a lot of people, or this look, I should say, represents a lot of people that are out and about and things that people are concerned about. And that is, it appears to be overfilled. When you can see this, and when you look now at 60 year old, versus 20 something year old, you don't see resemblance anymore. There's not a continuum that looks like the same. Now, if things are done right, again, with the idea that indeed that's what the goal is, if they're done right, as you can see here in one of my patients, when we're looking at her in her 20s, you can see that when she's younger, her overall face has that smooth, sharp jawline, nice general volume, but not overfilled, not you know tons of it. And then by the time she gets to her 60s, now you can see the faces starting to sag, volume loss is happening at the same time, there's shape change and volume loss occurring. Now after, here you can see, I performed a vertical restore, did some work around her eyes, did a fat transfer to just simply replace the lost volume. And when you do it this way, now you can see she actually looks a lot more like she did in her 20s. Like her 60 post-surgical self looks a lot more like her 20s than her pre-surgical self did. Aging actually made her more unrecognizable, not the surgery. And this is really, really important. That is because we used volume in the right way, just simply to replace some around her temples, underneath her eyes, above her eyes, a little bit in her lips, a little bit down along her chin. And these are the areas in the face that lose volume. Typically when the cheek looks like it needs volume, it's because the cheek has sagged. It's rarely because the cheek has actually lost volume. I almost never put fat back into a cheek. It's very uncommon that I do that, and if I do it, it's a very gingerly way. So the story here is that basically, if your goal is to look more like you did and not look like a different person, use things like fillers very gingerly and don't try to use it as a hammer and nail. Like aging is not you know, a one tool type of a problem to fix. It requires a number of different approaches, meaning that you have to treat the eyes, you have to treat the sagging, you have to treat the volume, you have to treat these things simultaneously, you have to treat the skin simultaneously. So at the end of the day, the overall face starts to look like it did before. So here are some ways you can generally avoid getting overfilled looking. Some important facts to know. Number one, fillers, like the hyaluronic acid fillers, and any filler, even Sculptra and Radius, all of these, first of all, eventually leave behind a footprint. And the footprint is in the way of the inflammational um, you know, scar tissue that is formed when your body is trying to break down these, these products the minute they go in. So the minute they go in, your body's in an inflammatory process trying to break it down. Ask any surgeon who's ever operated on a face that has had multiple years of fillers, and they tell you that it's like concrete in there. It really is a sticky, unnatural tissue. And that is because all of that tissue has been inflamed. And the consequence of that is scarring and fibrosis and all that stuff. So that fibrosis is not going away. That scar is not going away. Even if the hyaluronic acid actual product begins to dissipate, some volume is left behind. What happens is you get used to that volume. Then you feel the normal changes of aging happening, like the laxity and all that stuff happening. You're like, oh geez, I need more filler, I need more volume. So you go back in six months later, add a little bit more. Same cycle, you do this year after year and you're like, you know what, I've seen too many weird looking outcomes with, with facelifts, etc. I will not have a facelift, I'm just gonna stick with fillers and Botox and, and you know lasers and whatever and I'm gonna avoid that. And then what happens is five years goes by, 10 years go by and then eventually you start to look very dysmorphic, very different. Like, you know, cheeks are where they never have been. You know, jawline is thicker and stronger than it ever has been because people put fillers along the jawlines, people put filler out here to try to give the face a quote unquote lift. It never works. The end result is a face that, that is permanently, absolutely permanently disfigured and will never become like it did before. The best situation with fillers is you're gonna use them 
use them the right way, which means put them in the places that I mentioned, like the temples, small amounts of filler under the eye, a little bit in the lips, a little bit down around the chin, and you're cool, you let that be the thing. But here's a little uh, pro tip. The real window for when fillers actually make a difference in the face is pretty much in the 30s and early 40s, and that's it. Because once you start to get laxity, no matter how much filler you put in, you're never going to make your face look more youthful. Because as long as there's shape change, you will look aged. And the more aged you are, the more lax things become, the more it becomes like, like a, a very appropriate amount of filler, which is just a small amount in places, you're gonna start to feel like, wow, I didn't even get anything out of it. That was a waste of money and time. And that's because it is. <laughs> it's because it is. So if, you, if you're if you using it in that way, you're gonna find it to be a waste of time. Now, what's the right way? Just keep this in mind. If you're at an age in your life where you're doing this and you're lifting up your jawline and, and you're like, wow, you know, you put your finger here and your finger here and you're lifting up and you're like, okay, that looks, that looks like me, that looks, right? You're at that age where you need a vertical restore a face of something to kind of bring everything back up into position. And then in my practice, I use fat transfer in small amounts to fill in those areas that I just mentioned, but I'm already lifting everything, right? It's very uncommon for me to do a fat transfer alone, unless it's somebody who's really younger, who has genetic volume loss and it looks kind of haggard for a younger person. So if you're doing this, fillers are not your friend. You need to have a surgical approach. I've given Lots of videos on where and how to use fillers. I've given lots of videos on the history and the different types of facelifts. My strong feelings about them are all in those videos, so please check them out so you understand a little bit more how that can be. If you're afraid of looking unnatural, don't be as long as you're using the right surgeon with the right techniques, with the right experience, you're gonna look very natural and it'll be a very rewarding outcome for you. What won't be rewarding and will be frustrating is going down this road of filler after filler with no, no management of the laxity that happens. All of this conversation is to empower you to be able to help you make good decisions out there and at the end of the day, bring light on a subject that has really been a focal point of, of the popular press lately, the, this Madonna situation. So I wanted to use her as an opportunity to express some of the fundamental paradigms that I have about anti-aging and facial rejuvenation and how to avoid certain things. And I think this served as a really good opportunity to do that. So if you enjoyed this, make sure you, you hit like, comment with any questions you have, and really, really importantly, send this out to all your friends. Let the word get out. Let's avoid some of these problems from happening down the road. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit subscribe and, uh, and more of these videos down the road. All right, folks, thank you so much. Dr. Amir Karam.